Hi there, I'd just like to start off by apologising as I was supposed to make this video months ago and I never actually got around to it. So I'm doing it now. So apologies for anyone that was waiting for it. Um, so I use Deep Sky Stacker to stack my raw images from astrophotography together to create the final image. It's a free program and if you go to the link in my description you'll be able to download it for free and just follow this video to understand how it works and, and how to process your images in the same way. Right, so all you want to gonna do is install the exe file and follow the steps to install it on whichever hard drive you want and remember to choose uh, whether it's 32-bit or 64 depending on your processor and then once that's installed you're going to want to open the program up and click on open picture files and these are going to be your light frames that you're going to want to stack together to produce the final image so what you're going to want to do is go on your camera and find out uh, which uh, number correlates to which images depends on how many lights you've recorded and remember they all have to be the same length of exposure time and then once you've selected all of the ones uh, that are using as light frames you want to import them and then you have to select them all uh, so you want to press ch the check all box and that will it will essentially select all the light images that you've just imported Next up, you'll want to do the same for the dark files. And if you don't know what uh, the dark files are, it's when you put the lens cap on, uh, but you still keep the same exposure and all other settings exactly the same. And what this does is cancel out any noise that the sensor's producing, which will leave you with a much better final image because it sort of compensates the noise out of the, the final result. So you're going you're gonna to need like sort of about 10, at least 10% of how many uh, light frames you have. I think uh, any less than that and you're not going to have as good a result as the final image. Any more than that is fine though. And what you can do as well, which I haven't done yet, is uh, actually do flat images, which is is where you, you put something white over the lens and illuminate it. And this gives you sort of the opposite of, of what the dark files are doing in terms of noise. I've not yet bothered doing that uh, and the other one that you can do is offset bias frames which I have done and what they do is similarly as how the dark files work um, you're doing the same thing but you're making the shutter speed as fast as possible as, as opposed to the same length as your light frames but again I haven't done that in this demonstration as it's not really necessary in my opinion so you click on register checked pictures and it'll bring up this window and it says register already registered pictures I click yes for that automatic detection of hot pixels click yes for that and stack after registering so it's going to go through all the images determine whether they're usable or not and then once it's done that it's going to then stack all the images together to produce a final result and I've put select best 85% of the stack so if you get any pictures that say like a plane's going through the shot or it's going to take those images out from the rest and choose the best ones so where it says select the best 85 percent of pictures you can set that to whatever you want but what this is going to do is it's going to take 15 percent of the images that it deems are bad and not um, use them in the final result so any sort of meteors or a plane flying through the shot for example they're all going to be um, filtered out by the software and they're not going to end up in your final image which is what you want but depending on what you set this as I mean you can you can manually go through each photo and check there's no discrepancies in each one and do it manually and leave it 100% if you wanted to but for now I've just left it at 85 and let the computer do the work for you now this next part is particularly important because you're going to want at least 100 stars um, to show up in all the combined images to make sure that it's um, aligning as much of the image as it, as it possibly can. So you're going to want at least 100 stars to come up when you click compute the number of detected stars. And so what you want to do is play around with the percentage of star detection until you get in at least 100 or more stars. If it's uh, under 100 I'd increase 
or decrease the percentage so that it's actually detecting at least more than 100 stars. Next up, you're going to want to click on the recommended settings and there's various options you can use. Um, feel free to just copy mine because it works perfectly well. Um, and as you can see, it's going to stack the light frames using Sigma clipping combination. So it's essentially merging all the images together. Another thing you can do is um, say, say you're um, not using a tracker and you want to make sure that the subject remains in the middle of the image. You're going to want to probably choose um, the mosaic mode. If you're not using a tracker, then you're maybe going to want to select one of these other options where your subject is not in the center of the frame in of each one. Um, so what mosaic will do is, is a build up a bigger picture using all the different parts of the image that line up. Whereas if, if you are using a tracker and, and the subject is staying in the center of the frame, you can just leave it on the standard mode and you won't have any problem with that. Um, one of the other options you can select is enable drizzle times two or times three and that's going to take a lot longer if you select one of those and all that's really doing from what I can see is is making the final image a much higher resolution and a much uh, bigger file size and it doesn't necessarily increase the quality in any way it's more for if you wanted to print it that you'd use those but it does take a hell of a lot longer so try and avoid using them <laughs> Now you can also play around with some of the more advanced options if you want. I haven't really felt the need to yet. Um, so if you're happy, copy mine, then it should come out good depending on the light frames you've managed to capture. So once that's all done, click OK and then OK again. And it's going to tell you how long the final exposure, exposure is combining all your images together. So we've got 65 frames, the total exposure of 1 hour, 38 minutes and 35 seconds, no offset, and 30 dark frames and no flat frames. So each exposure is 1 minute 30 seconds. And you're going to need some hard drive space free on your machine for this to be able to run. And it may take as much as uh, a day maybe on, on some of the older processors or even longer. If you've got a fairly new machine, it should speed for it pretty quickly. I've been quite surprised how quickly it's managed to do some of them. So you're just going to let it do its thing and then come back in a few hours or maybe less depending on how fast your processor is. And it'll produce a final image which you'll then need to process in either this program or in Adobe Photoshop or equivalent programs. So he's going to let it do its thing and I'm just going to speed up this video in a minute and then we'll see the final image that's been produced. Now don't be put off when you see it uh, with no colour and sort of very grey looking because that's where the, the next part of the video comes in. Um, so I, I uh, took uh, light frames of uh, the Orion Nebula for the first time, or well, the second time actually. This time it came out much better than the previous attempt I tried. Um, I think the time before it didn't stack the images properly and uh, I think I had trouble with the quality of some of them because it was uh, early evening, it wasn't dark enough and Orion was too close to the horizon as well. But this time it came out much, much better. I was really happy with the results and you'll see for yourself in a minute how they came out. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to align the RGB channels somewhere in the center of, of this histogram and you want to try and get them to line up and match perfectly over the top of each other like, uh, like you'll be able to see on the screen now.
and you can stretch the the uh, light and dark um, points um, but you can do further processing in Photoshop later on but the main thing with this bit is to get them perfectly aligned then you're going to want to hit apply and you won't see much of a change yet but that's where the next uh, step will come in so you're going to want to go ahead and click luminance and then you're going to want to try and get this curve to sit in the middle of, of the RGB uh, section that you've just aligned and the way the best way to do this is to use the midtone uh, curve and get it so that you're getting this nice sort of S shape going right up through the middle and see the transformation is just immediate but the one thing you will notice is it's still very grayscale looking so you're going to want to bump up the saturation in a minute by like 20% or so and that should give you a much better looking image straight away but then we're gonna further refine this image in Photoshop later on so you're gonna want to tweak these settings until you're ha happy ish with how the image is looking and then once you are we're gonna save that as a TIFF and import it into Photoshop once you can see a decent amount of detail in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, save the file by going up to Save Picture to File under Processing tab, and then save this somewhere that you're going to be able to find it, and then go ahead and open Photoshop. So once you've loaded up Photoshop, you're going to want to open the file that you saved from Deep Sky Stacker. It'll be a TIFF file, so it may not show up in Explorer straight away because they're very large file sizes but go ahead and open that up and you'll still see more or less the same image that was in deep sky stacker so the first thing i would suggest doing is um, tweak your brightness and contrast settings and the adjustments under image and then go into levels and adjust the rgb histogram levels by using the mid-tone tab and the highs and darks as well until you're happy with the lighting of the image click OK you're going to want to tweak the, the brightness and contrast again after doing this most likely. It does depend on how your images come out from Deep Sky Stacker. You can also play around with the curves under the same tab. Um, but this is more or less what we were doing in Deep Sky Stacker with the RGB overlay channels. As you can see it's brought a lot more of the the nebula out by adjusting on this, just those few settings. You just want to keep playing around with these until you're happy with the amount of detail that's being brought out. Another tool I use is the reduce noise function and this just helps get away a lot of the unwanted noise that hasn't been corrected by the dark frames. And there's also a remove JPEG artifact function at the bottom that you can tick. A lot of this is going to be down to just fine little adjustments until you're really happy with how the final image looks. Um, beyond that, there's only so much uh, the software can really do. And if you're not happy with your final image, it's probably because either 
your polar alignment's badly out or you haven't done long enough exposures in the first place to capture enough of the object that you're capturing. But here I'm going to open up the same TIFF in Lightroom and show you the adjustments that you can do in there as well because I find that Lightroom has some better features uh, for astrophotography editing and just photography in general. So you can play around with the exposure, the contrast, you can still play around with the histogram. Um, it's just there's there's extra tools in Lightroom that Photoshop doesn't have and they can make a huge difference to how the final result looks. Now this texture slider and clarity and dehaze make a huge difference to the details that it brings out. Uh, what I would recommend you play around with this if you have a copy of Lightroom that you can use. This feature seems to be missing from Photoshop which I find really brings out all those fine details. I think Lightroom also has um, much better noise reduction features for photography. Um, so it's well worth checking out if you can afford to pay for Adobe's uh, software. Yeah, I think Lightroom has a lot better photo specific functions such as noise reduction and sharpening that you just don't get the same uh, quality in Photoshop with. So here is my final image of the Orion Nebula. I was really pleased how this came out. I don't know if it's just because it was so bad last time, but it, I just felt that this was a really nice image. Um, I'm only an amateur astrophotographer, but this really impressed me. The fact that you could see something like this, just using a mirrorless digital camera such as mine and a small telescope, you're able to see the Orion Nebula in such detail. So if you like this video, please consider in, uh, subscribing to my channel for future videos. And I still plan on doing a full review of the Sony A6100 series cameras. So thanks for watching guys and uh, to click the like button if you like this video.